Hello everyone, my name is Dikhil Varma. Um, it's so good to be here for the uh, Amrut Masterclass. Um, I would like to thank Spirits Magazine in association with IFPA for, uh, for organizing the We Care campaign and allowing brands like us to interact with the bartenders, um, uh, the mixologists and the entire bar community in India and, um, and come in support for them. Um, today we are going to look at uh, some of uh, the Amrut uh, brands within the portfolio in India and we'll go through all uh, all of them one at a time. I'll tell you about their story, about the company and everything else there is uh, for, for, uh, for you to know. Um, I'll start with, uh, with uh, the Amrut story, how it began. So Amrut is um, as old as independent India. We started in 1948 and uh, we began um, as Amrut Laboratories, and that was the beginning of uh, uh, of what today we know, know it as as a diversified group of uh, of the Jigdale uh, family. And um, we started with um, um, you know Amrut Laboratories, like I said, and and grew uh, it in uh, in 50s and 60s uh, with rum rectification, and uh, in the 70s with the great brand installation. Um, today we operate out of our uh, premises on Mysore Road, uh, that's where the distillery is, that's where we started with our remote production in the mid-1980s um, and that led us to uh, to the entire Amrut range that we uh, know it. Um, and um, it was actually in the 1990s, uh, that decade where uh, India saw an influx of international brands coming in India that uh, you know kind of propelled us to look at our whiskies and uh, by the end of the decade we were uh, sitting with a surplus of matured malt so it was around that time and and, and very close to the turn of the century when uh, you know, our lead chairman uh, had the idea of using and doing something fruitful with uh, with the matured stocks that we had so it was around 2000 when uh, our current managing director mr Akshay Chaktali, was doing his MBA dissertation when he uh, came about and in unison with our lead chairman decided to kind of do these blind tasting sessions and use um, you know some of the um, uh, whiskies that were maturing in casks and and go around doing uh, sessions where to evaluate the the, the nature and the the quality of malts when competed against the giants within the Scotch whiskey and, and the European whiskies. So the, the interesting results were uh, then kind of, uh, you know, put together to work towards, uh, you know, launching India's first single malt. We took about one and a half, two years to, you know, adhere to the international or European packaging standards. Um, and it was on 24th of August, 2004, that, uh, that India's first single mod was launched in uh, in Glasgow in a place called India Cafe and uh, since then you know it's been um, you know it's it's been a quite an eventful ride and that leads us right into um, this whiskey uh, Amrut Fusion. Amrut Fusion was um, uh, the fifth whiskey from Amrut's uh, portfolio in 2009 when it was launched and um, this was what I'm going to do is before before I tell you more about this I'm just going to keep a dram ready and uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of its tasting notes and, and as as the good folks within the industry say just never drink the whiskey out of out of the whole dram right away so we'll let it rest for about about 30 40 seconds and while i tell you about uh, about amrut fusion so amrut fusion um, the it was launched in 2009 but honestly um, its work began uh, close to 2006 2007 when our late chairman in one of his booty houses in uh, uh, during during a, a golf tournament was you know after after a, uh, after a long day he just he had two Amrut whiskies uh, peated and unpeated by then both of them were launched uh, in fact two Amrut cast strengths also were launched uh, which was uh, peated and unpeated at 61.8 and 62.1 which are still part of the whole range so uh, he took uh, the the Peter and Peter whiskies, put them together and just let it rest for, for a couple more days. Uh, he came back to it and uh, what he had then was was what we know today as fusion. So it was it was uh, you know it was it was something that was being made out of uh, you know out, out of absent mindedness and some curiosity uh, in, the, in the mind of uh, late Mr. Milkan Rao. 
and uh, that basically was where uh, we started we took those samples back to uh, the, the, the laboratory and you know did some uh, some blending again and we then uh, you know uh, fine tune the the fusion that we know today which is now a, a, an amalgamation or rather a fusion of um, uh, peated and unpeated cask uh, uh, cask aged whiskies um, so we it uh, distill and rather ferment and distill them individually and uh, let it marry for a period of four and a half five years some molds you know some little older um, and uh, and when the when when we think the mark the, the, the cask is ready or the whiskey is ready we'll roll that many casks out and put them in a in a combination of 75 um, to 80 percent unpeated and uh, 25 to 20 percent peated and marry them for a further period of six to eight maybe more uh time uh six to eight months is what i mean and and uh and uh and when when the orders come in we roll them out and uh, bottle them for you so this is what uh, the bottle looks like and here here is here is the canister so i'll, I'll take you through some of the tc notes uh right so this one is neat this is at 42.8 percent uh this is uh this is uh non chill filtered and uh, without any color right so on the nose fusion is always comes with, with a hint of peat it, and the peat is very uh, you know it's always teasing it's always uh, you know there in the background and and kind of uh, you know offering that balance and solidity from uh, um, from the, from the background and and kind of let's let's the unpeated portion of its shine all the way through and and the peated portion kind of uh, brings in um, you know the balance and and the complexity so um, you know on the nose is rich oak uh, some spirit um, of, uh, of, of of cinnamon flavored um, uh, nutmeg uh, a lot of licorice licorice is one of the most uh, commonly associated uh, tasting notes in fact cinnamon for me is one of the most commonly associated uh, tasting note uh, Across uh, the entire amount um, range, some dried breads, some caramel chocolate, some mocha coffee. Lots of complexity on the nose. I mean, I when when I first tasted fusion, this went for me, uh, uh, you know, on and on. In fact, this was a blind tasting when I first tasted it, and I and I sat with this. I remember for about twelve minutes just. Just nosing it, I didn't even take a sip of it uh, when I first tasted it. It was very intriguing, and it still today uh, holds true. So I'll, I'm going to add some water to it, um, uh, and just about like just a tiny bit so that it opens up. The water will let a lot of uh, the lighter floral notes come out, like the vanilla, uh, some honey. Um, uh, although there is there is this 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 very intense matuka honey uh, you know strength within it, uh, but when you put in a little water when it opens up a little bit uh, you know you get a lot more uh, you know simply as barley sugar and some some uh, modulating into uh, into some very uh, you know delicious honey that that we know it as. We'll take a first sip. Hmm. It's only for this purpose that I'm having to uh, drink it a little quicker than I usually do because it really offers a very, uh, uh, you know, the ability to hold it in your, on your palate a lot longer than than possibly other whiskies. It goes on. Uh, it, it's uh, slightly dry. It's um, citric. There's uh, cinnamon. There is licorice. There is a lot of, uh, you know, like I said, gentle peat. And there is this almost earthy beet it's it's sweet sour uh, there's some apples some some uh, some citric balance it's 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 very complex it really is and it, it uh, really lives up to the uh, reputation every time in fact i i often taste this whiskey blind and i can't keep coming back to it and 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 uh, being thoroughly impressed the finish is very uh, it's still going on it's salivating it's uh, it's oaky it's rich it's um, you know you get that um, 
uh, you know, wet forest, wet wood kind of a feel on your tongue. It's, and now since the monsoon is going on in, in most part of the country, um, you know, it's, it's a very common flavor to resonate with. Yeah, this is this is absolutely complicated. Uh, we'll take another sip. Uh, possibly also look at uh, a, a, a bit more on the finish. Again, some orange zest uh, this time. Um, the spices are uh, coming out a lot more. There's uh, there's a hint of. I actually know the peat also has now kind of with, with the addition of water has also started coming out a lot more and and uh, skillfully well and trying to you know get his uh, appearance well right so that was about fusion uh, we'll move into uh, um, into what came about as uh, as mostly as a success story and uh, one that that we still hold it in our hearts very dearly which is um, which is Amalgam. Now, amalgam uh, uh, came into being a lot later when, when, when the the, the seeds for its inception were sown uh, close to 2012. When Adelphi, one of the very popular independent bottles from uh, Scotland, approached us for our uh, for our single malt for their uh, whiskey called the Kin Cardine 70 Gold, and that was basically the you know one of the inspiring bits that led us to make uh, amalgam later. Uh, so they took uh, uh, Amrut Singhal, a seven-year-old Amrut Singhal malt, uh, and uh, blended it with uh, Macallan, Glen Elgin, and uh, and because as as you already know, the 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 youngest age of the whiskey uh, going into the bottle is uh, the age of the bottle. So uh, you know, since we gave the youngest that we could, uh, you know, the seven-year-old Amrut is really. Uh, very complex and, and, and a price possession, not just for the consumers, but also for for us because it's so rare in the in the, uh, in the climate, uh, you know, in the, in the zone that we are in. Bangalore really doesn't allow a lot of uh, whiskey to be aged for a really really long time. So, uh, seven year old in 2012 was uh, you know was as rare as an umbro that you could actually find. So uh, that we we you know very very generously uh, you know uh, made a part of the blend and. Um, and that was that was it. And actually, it was not till I think a couple of years then we that 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 that's, uh, that it struck to us that you know here here about four years ago, five years ago, uh, we were nowhere on the world whiskey map. And today we have uh, Scottish distillers and independent bottlers approaching us for our malls, which was honestly a very hearty feeling. And uh, and that kind of led us to creating um, amalgam. So what we'll do is we'll. Like I said, we'll, we'll put this in the new, brand new, clean glass. And amalgam is uh, uh, is India's first blended malt whiskey. So uh, what that basically means is, uh, you know, it uses malts from Umbrot, of course. It also uses malts from some of our friends from Scotland and some other Asian distilleries in uh, in Asia. So um, um, and. It, Every batch of amalgam obviously is 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 a blender's delight because you know you know, creating amalgam with such varied range of malts and whiskies is quite a difficult task. So uh, this one has about seven to eight amalgams going into it, uh, rather whiskies going into it to to make amalgam. Right. So we'll what we'll do is we'll uh, taste amalgam now. In fact, I'll just hold the bottle. Sorry, there's some space constraints. So yeah, amalgam. Uh, Amalgam's first association is citrus. Um, this is again mildly peated, so you will you will get a lot of uh, uh, a hint of rather uh, some peat, but that peat also is again uh, very gentle. And uh, some of the whiskies that we're using here are uh, from uh, our Scottish friends, so that offers a lot of floralness to it and. Um, and, and, and the peat that mingles with it uh, also creates that uh, bit of uh, complexity of, uh, you know, unlike unlike the peat uh, from fusion, which is, you know, uh, very complex and all of that. This is uh, slightly more evident, but also very, uh, very teasing in a way. 
citrus pears apples a lot of tropical fruits it's 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 a profile it's a profile of whiskey that that you would like to introduce to uh, to uh, you know people who are entering the whiskey more complex uh, uh, you know uh, world of whiskies but a very very good place and an interesting place to start from pears apples florals um, uh, some some bittersweet barley sugar right let's let's give it a you know, uh, uh, sip uh, as is mm. you can see the uh, the the blend uh, is ex extremely rich it offers uh, a very good bridge of uh, some of amrut's uh, popular uh, tasting notes to some of the more uh, un excuse me uncommon um, uh, pre flavor profile that that uh, that amrut is known for which which really comes together in in this right i'll just put in some water and we'll see how this opens up right lemon zest again uh, a lot of the peat is coming out now uh, there is a lot of floralness some ra rose garden flavors uh, you know uh, also um, some some green notes some herbal green notes and seed some muted spices which obviously is a uh, you know which is supposed to show there's there's uh, there's a number of signature on this again very smooth very easy on the palate very uh, complex at the same time and the, the the tasting notes on the nose do definitely transcend on the palate it offers a nice dry finish um, uh, some lemon zest some bitter sweet uh, honey uh, some uh, some spices um, it's stingly it's salivating it's it's a it's a medium to long finish uh, one, uh, uh, in fact, one of the whiskies that I definitely recommend a lot of uh, the the newcomers within the industry to to try and test and and make some uh, interesting cocktails with. Right. So uh, that leads us to um, its sibling, uh, uh, a more fierce sibling, might I say, uh, which is uh, Amalgam Peated. Now, Amalgam Peated. Uh, uh, came in a year after uh, Amalgam, which was 2018. Amalgam was launched in 2017. Um, and uh, this is a 100% full-blown peat sibling to Amalgam uh, and offers, quite honestly, uh, a treat for uh, the peat delights in India. So we'll, we'll go right into it and taste what Amalgam is. So amalgam, uh, amalgam peter rather is um, has about five to six malts. Uh, all of them, are, of course, peated. It's a blended malt whiskey, same as uh, as amalgam, um, but uh, rather amalgam has a lot more peter, uh, you know, malts. But this one has uh, uh, five to six. So um, uh, the the story is extremely similar. We get a uh, uh, Peter whiskey from Scotland. We get some from uh, from our other friends in Asian distilleries, and and of course Amrut. This one is um, is a peat monster. In fact, this is uh, um, extremely complex. And uh, one of the good signatures of peated whiskey is obviously the peat. But what really kind of puts them uh, good peated whiskies uh, apart from uh, some of the uh, uh, you know, some of the average ones is actually what you find behind the peat. So for me, amalgam is 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 that it's it's uh, the flavors like that that lie behind the peat is uh, are extremely intriguing. They 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 tell a story of their own and and actually stays true to the signature of amalgam, uh, which is citrus, floral fruits, um, garden flowers, a lot of wet forest wood. And it's extremely long and intriguing. So uh, 
yeah, it's 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 quite a delight. So let's uh, let's take in some water in here. There's there's a very complex uh, set of spices, uh, some uh, honey, vanilla, uh, touch of pineapple, um, and some dried dried oak as well, and peat of course. There's uh, that just goes without saying. That peat is just there and it's just kind of giving in that that balance and uh, shoulder that it needs honestly let's let's go for a taste hmm. smooth as silk um very complex very intriguing very smooth um, um really the peat is is gentle at the same time robust um, and it offers uh, quite a bridge between people who um, uh, are are known to peated whiskies or get uh, kind of introduced to peated whiskies with some of these peat bombs. Um, this is, while being very, very uh, fierce, it is also just as uh, uh, incoming. It's it's very inviting. The the flow profile is very incoming, and uh, it offers all all the tasting notes that one needs needs to uh, you know get excited with. So the good thing about amalgams is that because they are, uh, are, are a very, very good place to start both within um, the, the floralness of its uh, makeup as well as uh, you know, the, the fierceness of, of the peat uh, kind of gives it a nice balance of introduction. So it's, I, I know I for the longest time was when I was drinking amalgam, amalgam peat it was, was my favorite because it, it it offered uh, a really good place for uh, for for me to kind of go back to uh, understanding peat in this case because uh, you know sometimes we, we get thrown away by the peat so much that we get overawed by, um, by by the peatiness of, of some of these whiskies. So this this whiskey kind of offers a, a very good uh, you know vantage point for people to understand peat. Uh, what goes behind the peat and, and some of the flavors that uh, that come together to uh, to really shine the whiskey through. So extremely tasty, long finish uh, in the glass as well. There's very little in left, but it, it, it's kind of delivering uh, its, its package. Right. Brilliant. Uh, next we have for you. Uh, uh, we've we've done away with the three whiskies that. Uh, that, that we had to offer. I'll, I'll do a quick recap. Uh, mm -hmm. We started with Fusion. Uh, Fusion is India's, uh, you know, uh, a whiskey that, that won us, uh, you know, all the, all the glory. Uh, it was in 2010 uh, when Jim Murray rated Fusion as the third best whiskey in the world and, and scored it 97 points out of 100, which, which, uh, which is just incredible. I mean, just to think about that even today is uh, is, is extremely brilliant. Uh, you know, 25 points for for nose palate uh, finish and balance, I believe, and, and to score 97 out of that is is incredible. Um, and this has been the whiskey, uh, uh, possibly one of the most popular Indian whiskies around the world. We even today, this is our most selling brand, and we get recognized for this uh, more than uh, more than anything else. And it's, it's quite honestly a very humbling feeling. Um, and Amro Fusion is uh, now uh, retailed in, in, I think, 20, about 48 countries and uh, um, 21 states and unit territories in India. So it's it's doing very very well, uh, and it's it's something that is uh, uh, that is that, that makes us all very proud. So that's uh, that's Fusion, the single malt whiskey. Then then we come to the amalgams. Uh, amalgams have been uh, quite quite. Uh, Quite a good pair, and and, and you know, have, have maintained their sibling code very well. Uh, launched in 20, uh, 2017 um, and, uh, and and 2018 respectively. Uh, both offer have the same story, where it's an amalgamation of single malts. So there are single malts coming in from uh, from Scotland, from India, and from some other Asian distilleries. And uh, amalgam has seven to eight uh, single malts, uh, while amalgam peat it has. Uh, five to six, and uh, they both have a very common flavor profile of citrus, um, of, of uh, 
honey zest and, and uh, some nutrient spices um, and, 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 and a lot more but you know to one very uh, point of recognition for amalgam both the amalgam and the is that and, and it offers quite a quite an endless uh, flavor profile and, and a very good uh, vantage point for people starting into into luxury malls and, and spirits and, and uh, yeah it's, it's quite interesting so that's that's some albums and that uh, does us for the whiskey that we have for you today uh, next we'll follow up with with two indies rum so two indies rum is uh, truly uh, one of uh, one of uh, one of fine products from india and, uh, and not just from Amrut. Uh, two indies rum is uh, is india's first gold rum it, it speaks for itself in, for, and resonates with, uh, with a lot of people that have tasted it. Uh, it, was, it was launched in 2015 and uh, two Indies, not the name, itself uh, tells a story. In fact, while I go on, let me just pour myself some, uh, some two Indies so that So two Indies rum, uh, it's uh, made with uh, Indian jaggery. Um, now we all know jaggery. Uh, we're very well versed within within India. We uh, we all know jaggery and uh, uh, how, on a daily basis, in fact. Uh, and uh, so we distill that. We we get like these ten kg blocks of jaggery. We you know pound them and, and um, you know put in the fermenter, uh, put in some yeast, let ferment for four or five days. And then we distill it, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we will let it mature for three, four years. And uh, uh, when the the rum is ready, we roll out some uh, some molasses rum that we've gotten from the Caribbean islands, so which is uh, you know, from the distilleries of Guyana, Jamaica, and Barbados. And uh, so we take two Indies, which is West Indian rum, uh, which is coming from the Caribbean islands, and and East Indies that India was known as during. Raj uh, makes it two Indies. So it, the name is very uh, uncomplicated, but also tells the story of what really actually goes into making this bottle. So um, it's it's, uh, it's a combination of, of the two Indies. Yeah. So that is what it is, and uh, it's um, uh, an extremely delightful drum. Uh, in fact, let's let's get into it. And the jaggery, it's right there. It's almost um, um, it's. If if you if, if a distilled jaggery is very difficult to uh, imagine, you can look at uh, sugarcane. Sugarcane is a very very good nosing point, and there is complex molasses rum that is coming in from uh, from the Caribbean islands. So that that offers a lot of complexity. So there is basically jaggery used, and the Caribbean portion of the rum uh, is uh, is made with molasses. So that in itself offers a complexity of its own. And today it seems is is a national dietary day, so I think it's a very good place to uh, to you know uh, drink and start with doing these if you haven't already. Right on the nose, uh, it's rich leather, rich uh, sugarcane, uh, molasses, oak aged rum. It's like uh, you know walking into a leather proof car. Uh, it just that that smell is extremely memorable. Vanilla, of course, a lot of lot of barley sugar, a lot of uh, lot of sugar. In fact, if, if you have, if you incline to to sugar even one bit, I think that's is going to impress you. And, and it's obviously at the, at the same point, extremely complex and goes on. And because it's a, it's an okay product, it just offers a profile that is akin to uh, some of uh, uh, you know the most complex uh, rums around the world. So we. Really, uh, a sip. Mm. This is a bottle at 42.8 and extremely soft. And those those lovely rum notes of uh, leather, honey, uh, dark chocolate, mocha, coffee, dark, dark coffee. Uh, somehow, I also at this point also get some milk cake. Uh, so I'm guessing that is possibly coming from, from vanilla. Lots of uh, dark nutmeg, uh, dark spices like nutmeg, clove, 
yeah let's let's get into it with some water as well let's see what what how it opens up i just add like a couple, literally a couple of drops so that it just does it enough to open up yeah definitely opens up um offers a lot more uh, you know lighter but still uh, a wider range of flavors uh, so from all the dark fruits and and uh, dark chocolate and all the rest of it that that were possibly a lot denser in profile with a bit of open with, with a lot of little bit of water kind of opens up to say soft honey uh, soft spices vanilla a lot more uh, uh, you know easier uh, smelling uh, brown sugar mm. absolutely fantastic it's 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 absolutely one of those drums that that are um, uh, the I have get a lot uh, uh, you know, a lot of inquiries about doing these and a lot of people uh, some of these rum uh, uh, you know, rum drinkers and rum connoisseurs around uh, around the country they they will uh, you know obviously uh, talk about their uh, their collection of rums but somewhere in the bar there is always a bottle of two indies as well which is which is always good to see because it just goes to show that. Um, Two Indies has been able to uh, to do uh, to run the ones in the country what a lot of uh, uh, lot of people have been wishing and hoping for. So this is this is definitely one to have and save uh, for all the run run drinkers in the country. And this comes in uh, in all new packaging, so that's also something to be quite uh, quite proud of and 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 definitely hold me about. There's some uh, um, some exciting news coming in from Two Indies as well. I won't say much, but uh, you know, hold your horses till till we get some some announcements uh, coming from uh, with respect to two Indies as well in the future. So something to look forward to. Right. So uh, then we come out, come down to the last for this uh, this session, which is uh, Nil Giri's Gin, which is honestly uh, uh, one of the products that I have worked on myself um, in terms of distilling. Uh, it's 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 been it's. It's taken a long time to come out, of course, um, but uh, but one that that really is uh, dear to to all our hearts. So uh, I'll tell you more about this. In fact, let me just, let me just pour in some, pour in, um, some degrees. So this is a is a hundred percent distilled gin from Amrut. Now, Nilkiris was uh, saw its inception in uh, in 2016, uh, uh, and uh, this was um, you know South India is very very popular for uh, uh, for its spices. In fact, uh, Western Kerala, uh, part of uh, that is part of Western Ghat, produces about 75% uh, of spices uh, uh, from the southern southern belt of India. Um, I think it's 80%. So yeah, the percentage is really, really high. So you get all of these cardamoms and cinnamons and, and, and nutmeg, uh, mace, and a lot of these available uh, from from South India. So uh, during uh, uh, you know around the 20, 2016, uh, around the year of 2016, uh, you know again it starts with with Uti. That's where a lot of the uh, concept, uh, conceptions for for our products kind of take place. Uh, it was uh, you know uh, our uh, our late chairman, of course, was uh, you know in Uti at the time, and the, his farmhouse kind of overlooks the Nilgiris range, and he was thinking about kind of uh, creating a product uh, with uh, using uh, some of the uh, South Indian spices. So that 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 kind of led him to know more about uh, what are the what are the uh, spices available, where they come from, um, and uh, uh, and he kind of. Uh, you know, Trailed around uh, Dodra Beta, which is I think the highest peak of uh, Nilgiris mountain range, uh, uh, which is actually about 9, 13 kilometers from uh, uh, from his farmhouse. So he went there. He spoke uh, to uh, you know the, 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 the people there and uh, came back with some spices and herbs and all of that and thought of creating a gin of uh, uh, from India. And uh, that basically was the the. Founding stones laid for for this gym. 
uh, then uh, I, I went around uh, sourcing some more botanicals from India, some more botanicals from South India. Uh, and uh, because it's called Nilgiris, we want to give it a, a, a its signature by using Nilgiris uh, tea. So, uh, and uh, that that was basically that. And uh, that also led us to using pan. So now we use two different types of pan, which is uh, Mysore pan, uh, which gives a nice uh, peppery, uh, spicy bite while also using uh, Kumbakodam pan from Tamil Nadu. So that also give, now that gives a very different flavor profile, which is very floral, earthy, um, almost, um, you know, it's extremely sweet, in fact. And, and, and some of the uh, pans that are very popular and, and the floralness of the pan that, that most of us know uh, comes from that, uh, um, from Kumbakodam pan, while the, the spicy, the more edgy, citrusy bit comes from uh, from, uh, from the Mysore pan. Uh, so this one has uh, 10 botanicals, uh, uh, juniper, um, coriander, they obviously go in hand, hand in hand. Coriander is like uh, uh, the joker to the Batman. So they go really well together. And then we're using uh, uh, lemongrass for the citrus uh, uh, aspect. Uh, more concentrated citrus flavor while coriander also adds uh, a lot of citrus uh, to it uh, and, and juniper of course is one of the most versatile botanical out there it just kind of gives in all the camphors and, and lavender and, and a bit of sweet citrus uh, some spices also at, at the end uh, and the three spices that we use are uh, nutmeg coriander and mace we're using angelica and orange to give it that that balance and, and bring those flavors together mostly used as binders uh, um, and 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 uh, and, palm. and of course nilgiris tea so uh, these these add a, a lot of balance and, and complexity to the gin so this one um, on the nose is it's it's a, a juniper forward gin uh, and uh, obviously uh, you can't miss the oralness of it um, it, it adds a nice balance and bridge between a classic gin with uh, with an with an Indianness to it, where where the spices then come through and 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 the complexity of the tea, the delicateness of the tea, kind of shines through, and and the palm offers uh, some floralness as well. It's it's uh, it's yeah, it's something that that is extremely close to my heart and. It, Shines through. So the juniper, some muskiness, um, some uh, also some saltiness. In fact, uh, uh, I do get a lot of uh, nuttiness as well. Some almond nuttiness, although there is no almond going in, but you know how flavors within the spirit uh, come together. They, you know, one plus one is never two. They always kind of compound together to form more exciting flavor profile. Some nuttiness, some hint of coriander, spices, and the pan really is uh, kind of gives in that uh, that softness, that delicateness that uh, that it uh, that we know the gin to to express. There's a lot of dryness on the nose as well. Let's let's give this. Very tasty, very smooth, very soft. In fact, uh, lately I have been drinking this um, chilled. I put uh, I, I put a bottle of uh, Milgiris in the freezer and then just take take a glass, put put in some ice, and pour a uh, 15 to 20 ml of this. And uh, uh, if I'm lazy, I, I let let it be the way it is. Uh, when I when I want to add something, I just add some uh, some uh, lemon or orange peel to it, and that's that's me done. And it it just um, it's a really good sipping gin as well. It, uh, uh, it while uh, a G and T or cocktail obviously is is the way to go. But if you ever are in the mood to have uh, uh, a sipping gin, Nilgiris really kind of um, is is one to look forward to because uh, the the putting in the freezer really freezer really puts you know kind of gets a chill and and uh, puts the flavors constricts some of the flavors and that that when get diluted with some ice um, uh, really open really well so that's I'll, I'll try this with some some water as well let's see how much it does open up 
this is bottled at 42.8. Again, uh, musk, uh, some juniper, soft juniper, some citrus, uh, very uh, uh, floral as well. The delicateness of the tea is almost, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's almost too complicated to miss. Uh, it has that muskiness, that dryness, and all of the dryness that is coming in with the gin uh, really uh, really sets the tea apart. Right. Let's let's give it a taste. Very soft, very smooth uh, musk, lavender. Has a hint of uh, palm on on the palate. Um, some butteriness as well, some spices. The finish is long, salivating and uh, citric, very dry, extremely dry. In fact, um, it's a little sour as well. It's bittersweet on the end. So it really kind of uh, packs quite a punch and, and uh, gives to, comes together well again. So that's a uh, little grease for you. Um, and that officially brings us to the end of our, our tasty. Uh, you can feel free to reach out to me uh, on Instagram uh, as well as uh, uh, write to me. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can write to me directly at uh, nikhilatamlodistilities.com. I will try to answer any question that you might have about whiskey uh, and, and, and rum and gin and, uh, and all the other products uh, put together. So to put it in, uh, in a nutshell, we had we began with a fusion, uh, uh, India's India's most pride, uh, pride possession. The two amalgams, the amalgam siblings, um, citrus, one peated, one mildly peated. Um, we had the two Indies rum, uh, India's first gold rum, um, and uh, available in uh, West Bengal, Karnataka, Goa. Uh, I think it's also going to come to Maharashtra and other parts of the country as well. It's also given in the EU that we are traveling to Europe and in America as well. Um, and the Nilgiri uh, it's, uh, it's It's going to be available all over the country very soon. Uh, it's available in uh, Karnataka and Goa currently and uh, uh, America now uh, with the uh, European Union also uh, having stocks of this and, uh, and Singapore. It's going to be there in a lot of other countries and in places in India and, and look forward to uh, tasting it and all the other products that we have from from I, I hope you had a good time. Uh, let me know if you if you have any specific questions then I'm Thank you.